Welcome to Transporter. My name is David Hill. I write product documentation at Connected Data. Today we are going to show you how SIFS only clients can share with Transporter only clients by using Transporter desktop software running on Microsoft Server as a go between for the two environments. In this video, we are going to cover four topics consolidating our shares, installing Transporter desktop on Microsoft Server 2012, sharing a folder via both SIFS and Transporter simultaneously and syncing a file from a SIFS only user to a Transporter only user. The requirements for the solution are Microsoft Server 2012 R2 or later, Transporter Desktop 3.1 or later for Windows, a business class Transporter device, and available organization users. In other words, your Transporter cannot be at its user limit already. Due to the nature of Transporter Desktop software, Connected Data will initially test and support this solution on the assumption of a full install of the server GUI. While you may attempt the solution on a minimal or core server installation, as is often recommended by Microsoft, your mileage may vary. In this demo, we are going to use three computers. The first computer will be a Mac that lives on the same LAN as the server and therefore connects only via SIFS. As you can see, the transporter menu is conspicuously missing from the menu bar here. The second computer is a Windows computer, which will play the role of a computer that is remote and cannot reach the server via SIFS, so this computer connects via transporter only to the company network. The third computer we will be using in this demo is the Microsoft Windows Server 2012 R2, which is right here. Another thing useful to note is that in this demonstration, the Mac and the Windows 8 computer are both owned by the same user. They could just as easily be owned by two different users. That doesn't really matter. What matters is that we're going to show file transfers between a SIFS only computer and a transporter only computer. We're looking at the transporter folder. Note that there is not yet an accounting folder. That's something we're going to add in a moment. And just for demonstration purposes, we'll look at the transporter desktop preferences just to see who's logged in. We have the user Douglas Rees logged in. Uh, so we'll close that. And now we're going to look at the Mac for just a moment. Looking at the Mac, we can go connect a server. And there's a link to our server already saved. We're going to log in as the same user. Okay. And now we're going to see the shares from the Microsoft server and note that they're completely different. Here's the accounting folder, which was not present on the transporter only computer. And during the course of this solution, we're going to see uh, that folder sync between the two systems. We'll go and connect this here and we can see uh, there it is with some contents. Since we're not going to use that immediately again, we'll eject it but you can see that this is the SIFS computer. As a prerequisite to installing Transporter Desktop on the server, we are going to need a dedicated organization user account to use on the server itself uh, with which we'll log in. So we'll go ahead and create that before we go back to the server. So here we have our administration website. I'm going to invite a new member. I've created a distinctive email address for our server. Uh, which is pretty obviously named there for the 2012 server. It will be the first server on our network. I'm going to submit that. Now, of course, we're going to have to accept that invitation on behalf of that user. So we will go to our mailbox and look for that to arrive. So we'll follow this link and we will give the server Douglas's name since he's the administrator anyway. And we'll just make the username very similar to the email address and we'll create a password, agree to our terms and sign up. We will skip this. Uh, this user will be searchable for now anyway. And here we have some default settings for your account, which are relatively self-explanatory. We can get into these more at a later date for now. We're just going to leave them at default and click next. Here's where you'll see the software download because we're going to install this on a different computer we really don't need to install the software here uh, that will be installed at the server. So we're just basically trying to get to the end of this and be done. And there's our quick start guide. And uh, really this user is pretty much done here. So we're just going to log out. And now we should return to our Microsoft server to start the process of installing Transporter Desktop. But before we do, we need to make a point about consolidating shares. Because the server can have only one transporter folder, all shares must be consolidated on one volume. It may be a single disk, arrayed, or other, so long as it mounts to the server as one local volume. Transporter Desktop does not resolve aliases or symlinks between volumes, and we don't support any attempts to creatively circumvent that limitation. However, you are free to execute this solution on multiple servers if you need to. So you can see for our demonstration that we've placed all of our shares in one subdirectory of the C disk, and uh, here's the accounting folder which we're going to share momentarily. Before we can share that, we need to install Transporter Desktop. So 
we're going to go to our support website, support.filetransporter.com. We're going to scroll down to the bottom of the page and get the transporter desktop installer right here. I'm going to save that to my desktop rather than run it in the browser window. So now we are going to run the transporter desktop installer. Agree to the terms. And at this point, we want to install the application at the default location. This should not be confused with the location of your transporter folder, which we'll set in just a moment. And this will require a reboot of the server. Now we can see that Transporter Desktop has launched and we are going to log in with our organization user account and change the location of the Transporter folder to match where we've consolidated our shares. And here's where we'll change the location of our Transporter folder. And we're going to set this to correspond to our C directory where we've placed our shares. We'll just place it right here at the top of the shares directory. And click next. And now we can see we've got our transporter folder and we have our transporter menu in the taskbar. So now we can return to our common shares directory. And here our goal is to move the shared folders into the transporter. But we do that with this warning. Changing the path of an existing share may cause it to cease being a share and to lose its user group privileges information, in turn causing you to have to reconfigure it. If you have complex folder setups, be sure to retain that information prior to implementing the solution or use appropriate Microsoft and or third-party utilities to move the shares in a manner that preserves and or restores these settings. Many of you are probably already familiar with such options, but for simplicity in this demonstration, I'm going to simply drag these shares into my transporter folder and allow the shared property of these folders to be lost. So now I'm going to go back inside my transporter folder. It now contains the shares, and you can see by the updating icons that they are beginning to synchronize with the server. Because I don't have many files in this demonstration, they synchronized very quickly. So now let's look at properties on the accounting folder. We can see it's no longer shared, so I'll share it. I'm going to add back our first user here. Give this user read write permissions, and hit share. So at this point, the accounting folder is being synchronized to the transporter, and it is once again a Microsoft share, but it's not yet a transporter share. So the next step is going to be to use the transporter contextual menu to share the accounting folder. This will take us to the management website, and in this demonstration, Douglas is the only other active user I have in my organization. That's just for simplicity. So we'll invite Douglas, give him read and write privileges, and click submit. So now we have the accounting folder with one member, who's Douglas, of course, in your organization. You'll add many more members. And we'll return to the server desktop. And just to get a better view, large icons. And now we can see that the icon is refreshed to show that this is a shared folder. So it's now shared both in terms of being a transporter shared folder and in terms of being a Microsoft server, a SIF share. Now we want to return to Douglas's Windows 8 PC. And we want to look inside his transporter folder. Uh, now you notice the accounting folder is not here yet. That's because Douglas has not accepted the email invitation. I happen to have Douglas's email open on the Mac. So let's check for this. Douglas has invited you to a shared folder named accounting. So we're going to log in and accept this invitation. And there's our invitation. So we'll accept that. And as soon as we do, we're going to see that this folder will start synchronizing to the Windows PC. And there it goes. You should see the file start arriving momentarily. And there are our files all at once. The next step is now to return to our Mac, which is connected to the network only via SIFs, and see if we can share some files back to the transporter only user, which is the Windows 8 PC. So here we have a folder full of files, and we just need to connect to our server. Log in as our user. And mount the accounting folder. And there we go. Now we have the accounting share mounted via SIFs, and let's drag some files in there. Now they're copying to the server, which will in turn sync to the transporter. We should be able to see that folder synchronize at the server momentarily. And there it goes. You saw it flash blue and then green again. Now we should also see those appearing on Douglas's computer. And there they are. So to recap, as part of this video, we have consolidated our shares. We've installed Transporter Desktop on the Microsoft server. We have shared a folder via both SIFs and Transporter. And we have synced files from a SIFs only user to a Transporter only user, which will now work in both directions. We'd like to add a couple of more notes in closing. 
The organization user account that you've created for your server should be reserved only for that server. This user's credentials should not be shared beyond your administrative team and should not be used anywhere other than on its designated server. This user will count against your transporter device's user limit. Now that you've completed this procedure, both transporter and SIFS users will see the same contents of the co-shared folders within the limits of sync time between the systems. You do need to repeat the steps that you've done for the accounting folder on any other folder that you want to share in this manner. Please keep in mind that when transporter users create new shared folders, that they will need to invite the server's organization user account to any folder that you want to share with the SIFS only users and that the server administrator would have to enable it as a SIFS share after it arrives on the server. Likewise, any new SIFS share that is created at the server would need to be shared via transporter. With regard to transporter version history, all changes made by SIFS users will appear under the name of the server's organization user account. The server administrator may obtain additional information from Microsoft Logs. To see a written version of this procedure, please visit go.filetransporter.com slash SIFS coexist. Thank you for watching.